You're listening to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast, Season 1, Episode 5. Top 13 must-have tools for your virtual business. Welcome back, everyone, to the Liberty Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Ash. And this week, I'm going to be sharing my top 13 must-have tools for managing and working with your virtual team. So unlike in an office environment where you can just walk up to someone and chat about the weekend or get to know someone on a bit of a personal level or build that camaraderie, you know, it's a lot more difficult with a virtual team and requires a different kind of flow and tool set to stay on the same page. I went through my daily routine and just started writing down the tools that I use pretty much every single day. And I listed them down and I wrote some of my notes on why and how I use these tools. And I think that if you start incorporating some of these, you and your virtual team will have better organization, better communication, you have less distractions and less confusion. Also, remember, I've created a home base for you for season one. If you go to libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season and the number one, you'll find all of the episodes in season one, as well as the full show notes, links, and all the podcast resources. Lastly, if you find this episode valuable, please share it with your friends. Building freedom is pretty difficult, and these episodes should offer the perspective to possibly light someone's inner entrepreneur. All right, let's get started. Number one, Google Docs. This is pretty much a given at this point. I use it for everything. Every new idea that I have, boom, I create a new folder in Google Docs. It helps me organize literally everything from the podcast to the bank to Liberty Virtual Assistance to speeches that I write, present for like Anarchapoco or presentations at FinCon, podcast movement. Everything gets its own folder in Google Docs. And I find that with just decent file management, Google Docs gives you the ability to search, share, permission, co-edit at the same time with other people on your team. And it's really just second to none. Google Docs is a game changer. Number two, Asana. So this is my preferred task management tool. I can create filters for all of my virtual staff to quickly review their open and incomplete tasks. I can also add followers to each task in case I want another set of eyes on it. Uh, setting due dates, making comments, creating projects, even creating subtasks are all super easy and intuitive. Another really neat feature is the daily update emails that Asana sends to remind me of all the upcoming tasks I or anyone else has. And I can easily reply back to that email and uh, add comments in email format that go back to the actual task itself in Asana. So the communication channel has been thought through very thoroughly. I've actually gone days without speaking to my virtual staff because of how well we can communicate with Asana. I've also included a screenshot of how I organize Asana for each of my virtual assistants with a quick link in the bookmarks toolbar. If you go to the page that accompanies this episode, you'll see a screenshot there of all of our names so I can very quickly access all of my individual virtual assistants, Asana dashboards, see what they're working on, see what tasks are due, and the due dates. Again, that's libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash S01E05 for season one, episode five. There are other task management tools out there, Basecamp, Trello. I haven't used them personally. Asana is free for up to 15 members of your team, and I've never run into a use case where I've needed to purchase their monthly subscription. Number three, website staging server. This is a bit of a curveball. No one else has really talked about how this is a tool that's really necessary for a virtual team, 
but I found it indispensable. So I use a hosting company called SiteGround, uh, SiteGround.com, which I highly recommend. And rather than having my web dev virtual assistant work on my live site or even have access to my domain with SiteGround, he can make the changes on a staging server and make sure that all the updates go as expected. It's super clean and very efficient and very easy way to prevent unnecessary errors and mistakes on your live site. You know, I have had a situation where some PHP code was being changed on the fly on my website by one of my virtual assistants and it took the website down and I had to go pull backups and reinstall. It wasn't that big of a deal because I keep back backups of all my sites. I actually use a plugin called Updraft Plus. It's a plugin for WordPress. It's very, very easy to install, super cheap one time. It's like, I don't know, $79, but you can make daily backups. But we're talking about a website staging server. If your hosting company doesn't offer website staging servers as a product or as a service, there's a word, another WordPress plugin that you can use called WP Staging. All of the links to all of this will be included in the show notes. But this is WP Staging, which has worked well for me in the past to create staging servers for a very similar type of arrangement if your hosting provider, again, doesn't offer staging services. A staging server looks just like your normal website except it will be on a different server. You can create users, uh, username and password to allow your virtual assistants to log in so they can have full admin permissions, change anything they want to change in there, show you the changes that they made, get your approval, and then push it to the live site. I find it works really well. There's no way that I could go back. Number four, Canva. So social media graphics are so important in nearly every type of digital business. And Canva gives a really intuitive interface to create these types of social media graphics, be them banners or pop-ups or like each of my podcasts has a, a really slick looking graphic associated to each episode. It's just a really easy way to go in and quickly create some templates so you can start applying uh, all of your graphics onto without having to make everything from scratch each time. And it doesn't require someone to be proficient in Photoshop. Yes, if you're good in Photoshop, you're most likely going to want to use Photoshop or your, if your virtual assistant is good in Photoshop. But what I found is that most virtual assistants prefer to use something like Canva because it's more of a, a drag and drop type of graphic design suite rather than having to know all the nitty gritty of Photoshop. One neat thing about Canva is that you can import or upload a bunch of your own images and they'll just save them there. So anyone on your team can log into your, your team's Canva account and have access to all your backgrounds, all your fonts, all your images, you know, everything so they can quickly start splicing and putting together some social media graphics for you. Number five, numero cinco, Meet Edgar. All right, so it's a strange name, Meet Edgar, but they basically have changed the social media content queuing game. Rather than your standard FIFO or first in, first out approach where you pile a bunch of content into your social media queue, it runs through to execution and then you have to continue to pile more content on top. Me Edgar allows you to create libraries of content with different category labels so you can schedule and pull from. Here's an example. I have around 200 inspirational quotes that are labeled as such in Me Edgar. I created a library that's for inspirational quotes and they just have that label. Now, I've scheduled one post every single day for inspirational quotes. Instead of me having to go through and find a new inspirational quote every day, or maybe I batch this job and do it once a week and find seven inspirational quotes, I can now go and find 200, like I have, 
and then just load up in the library. So whenever I have scheduled, let's say I have scheduled at 8 a.m. every morning that I want an inspirational quote so you can turn on your computer and get inspired first thing in the morning when you get to work. Well, it will just pull from the inspirational quotes library that I have rather than me having to tell it the specific quote that I want to use. All I need to do is schedule a post of type inspirational quote and the rest is handled for me. I also do this for my podcast episodes, YouTube videos, helpful tips, and a lot more. So rather than my virtual assistant or I having to go and continually load up content, we can just save it in a library forever. Now that's not to say that I don't put out original content or that I don't put out uh, and retweet or repost other people's content that's relevant. There's also a library in me Egger called the Use Once Library that does work just like maybe Hootsuite or Buffer that it's just first in first out, it's gonna be used once and then it's not saved into the library. But at like $50 a month, if you're looking to save a lot of time and you want to train your virtual assistant not to have to go out and find content, but just manage the content that's in your library, this is a really great tool. That's meetedgar.com. Number six, Outlook. Okay, I know some of you may be moaning right now that I'm recommending Outlook, but if it's not broke, don't fix it. Email management is a must for anyone who is on top of their game. If you're not, then you're going to be overwhelmed at some point with your inbox. And if you're not overwhelmed, one of your VAs might start getting overwhelmed with their inbox. Historically, I've used Outlook as my preferred email application, and I always set up separate folders and rules to filter and sort certain emails and maintain order. Some things are more high priority and they need my attention and they have their own special folder. Say if somebody sends us a bill or if somebody sends us a payment. So help your virtual team organize their own inboxes with similar email rules so that those between the cracks email mistakes are few and far between. I should mention that Google Suite has caught my attention lately. That's uh, gsuite.google.com but I haven't used it yet. It looks really affordable, five or $10 per user. And it looks like a really great dashboard for managing a small business email. It's basically like a dashboard. So if you have experience with Google Suite, or I think they call it G Suite, then please leave a comment and tell me what you think. I'm really thinking about switching over. Number seven, Skype. This is Skype.com. You know, everyone knows about Skype. It was one of the coolest and most innovative products whenever it came out, man, maybe even 10 years ago at this point. But it still does one thing really well, and that is free voice over IP. And it's currently Team Liberty's preferred voice communication app. You know, there's other alternatives, Google Hangouts and Zoom and all sorts of stuff these days. But We regularly stick to Skype for voice and video chat, as well as text chat. You know, it's easy, it's free, it's straightforward. The screen sharing, file transfer, and group calls are great. Again, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So we we still use Skype. Number eight, Telegram. This is telegram.org. You know, there's countless messaging apps out there now. I can remember being in college in the early 2000s when text message was just, you know, just crushing it and everybody was starting to text message because um, instant messenger, AOL instant messenger was really the only other way to chat and text messaging on your phone was so expensive. And I was just thinking like, man, there are going to be so many protocols to send just standard ASCII text messages one day that it's going to be overwhelming and and that day's now but my team and I have chosen telegram for our day-to-day text chatting it's convenient to use on the desktop web browser they support pretty much all operating systems and and smartphones it's very lightweight 
regarding resources on your computer, unlike other apps such as Slack that I found can take up and eat a lot of resources and slow down your computer. Remember, your virtual assistant probably doesn't have a computer as fast as yours, and so keeping applications at a minimal but still very functional is going to be a big help for them. Number nine, Google Drive. This is drive.google.com. Online cloud storage is essential when growing a digital business. All of you know that. But being able to easily create and share new files is so easy with Google Drive. Similar services like Dropbox are also available, but I choose Google Drive because it syncs so flawlessly with Google Docs. And for only $2.99 a month, I can buy 100 gigs of cloud storage. One recommendation that I have is create a folder for each of your virtual assistants so that they can have like a home base, a root folder, if you will, to organize their own files. And then you can start putting their files in more appropriate folders once you're able to review and discuss and get the final product. But having good file management is really essential and Google Drive absolutely nails it with super cheap storage. Number 10, Snagit. Snagit's made by a company called TechSmith, and I've been using it for years now, and I'm really, really pleased with it. They've come through countless different versions and revisions, but I use it, I would say I use it every single day. I take screenshots really often. Typically, I put little arrows or highlighted areas to get my point across. For example, one of my VAs recently misspelled the word referred on our web form on libertyvas.com. And so I took a quick screenshot, drew an arrow to the misspelling, saved it as an image, created a new task in Asana, attached this screenshot, and boom, I can be confident that he knows exactly what I'm talking about and will get the spelling error corrected ASAP. Again, that's Snagit. I think it's like $30. And the website is www.techsmith.com forward slash screen dash capture dot HTML. Or you can just search Google for Snagit. It's a really awesome tool. Number 11, short keys. This is shortkeys.com. Okay, this might be my favorite tool of all of these and it's a pretty good list. Basically, Short Keys is a text expansion tool that I have used for years on my own and that I've purchased for a few of my virtual assistants who are customer facing. Basically, you can type a very short key sequence, which Short Keys will expand into sentences or paragraphs for you. I found it extra helpful to use Short Keys with URLs or email addresses. So instead of typing out, email me at info at libertyentrepreneurs.com, I just say, email me at slash slash info, and then that expands out to info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. I've added a screenshot. If you go to the page that accompanies this podcast, I've added a screenshot of what short keys looks like. It's a really simple, very lightweight, awesome tool. I highly recommend it. Again, that's shortkeys.com. Number 12, Zoho CRM support and campaigns. This is zoho.com, Z-O-H-O.com. Okay, this product is wonderful. They've had their growing pains. I've been with them since 2012 but they've put together a really great suite of apps to organize a small business, and I've used them, like I said, for years. The combination of a CRM system combined with an email support system to answer client inquiries and an email marketing campaign, Zoho Campaigns, will get your team on the same page, allow you to automate and delegate so much stuff. It'll keep your leads, your contacts, your accounts, all organized, give you opportunities to apply 
uh, certain modules or labels uh, and detail all of your data in your database, all of your all of your leads or all of your potentials, everyone who's doing business with you, your podcast guests, your podcast guest leads, you know, everyone goes into a CRM system because that's your network. That's your black book is your CRM system. To be a little bit more specific, Zoho uses leads, contacts, and accounts to help you organize your business. Leads can be created manually or from web forms, from pop-up signups, landing pages, etc. And it's fairly simple to connect uh, a form or a pop-up on your website to Zoho CRM so a new lead is created automatically. Once someone becomes a client, someone who either we pay or someone who is paying us, then we convert that lead into an account and a contact. So we keep up with stuff like lead type, lead source, phone number, email, website, business needs, and so much more in our CRM system. That's Zoho CRM. Zoho support is an email ticketing system for incoming emails and makes it very easy to keep track of all your client email inquiries, which are still open and need attention. You can create service level agreements, automated workflows, auto email replies, due dates. You can assign to a certain person or to a certain department, track how long it takes to get your average client inquiry resolved. It's really powerful. The third part of this trifecta of Zoho is called Zoho Campaigns. And this is used in conjunction with Zoho CRM to build a marketing list so that you can effectively manage your email marketing sequences. Here's an example. If you go to the website, libertyentrepreneurs.com forward slash season one, you'll see that we have a pop-up that offers our top 27 tasks to delegate to a virtual assistant. It's a free guide that I've created and we give it away in exchange for your email address. Everyone who fills it out and gives me their email address gets to download it instantly. A new lead is automatically generated from the pop-up into Zoho CRM and then it gets added to a specific marketing list in Zoho campaigns so that now I can send that person other valuable guides that I create and hopefully they'll want to hire a virtual assistant one day since I'm staying in front of them with an email sequence that's very helpful and hopefully they find very valuable. All of this is integrated. All of this works together. You set it up one time and then the system supports you. Remember, just be careful not to spam. All right, last but not least, number 13, schedule once. This is www.schedulewants.com. Organizing podcast interviews, virtual assistant interviews, phone calls with prospective clients, etc. can take a long time to set up and organize so that everyone knows they have free time and they can connect at that specific time. Instead of going back and forth with people, we use schedule once to reduce this confusion and offer several times to meet and chat. It integrates with Outlook Calendar, Google Calendar, and Apple's Calendar so that you never miss another important meeting and people know when you are available to chat because you've opened up your schedule and said, yes, I am able to chat at these times. I believe the plans start at only $5 a month and for me, it's an absolute no-brainer. I've even purchased licenses for of Schedule Once for my virtual assistant staff who does the recruiting for Liberty Virtual Assistants because they're trying to get on the phone with all these virtual assistants for a first round interview before we ever pass them over to the clients for the final interview. Again, that schedule once, I've been using it for several years now. I cannot go back. All right, so that's it. My top 13 must have tools for your virtual business. I really hope you found this valuable. I'm speaking from experience on all of these tools. If you have other tools that you think I missed out, please leave some comments. 
and let me know. You can find us on Facebook, on Twitter. You can email us info at libertyentrepreneurs.com. All of the links and the podcast resources are found at the post that accompanies this episode. If you're ready to get started or learn more about working with or hiring a virtual assistant, come on over to our page, libertyvas.com, libertyvas.com. You can also go to libertyvirtualassistance.com, whichever is easier for you to remember. If you don't mind, share this episode with your friends. There's a, a lot of value here. And like I said, I think that if you start incorporating some of these 13 tools, you are going to build a successful online business that is going to allow you to build your own free lifestyle. So please send us a rating, share the episode, and until next time, you know what to do. Keep building freedom. Out.